้องกุยจบองจุนนุ่มแรกประกาศต่อกระจมนาการในเตปีสัมนาการสัมนาการเดือนไงดิปืนสัมนาการรับอิสระทานมันจบไปที่เพศอาจดาวหรือตะนมเรืองสูงสูงสูงปีได้หนึ่งปืนหลังโดยสัพเพญากลามจีสัมนาการกัญญาเจียสือของลาวีการบริษัทพิพัฒน์ตะเมียนอวัตตะเมียนพิธีนังบุกโกลได้เอาหนึ่งแรกก่อนเชื่อหนึ่งโจรวมในขนมไปจำนาการสัมนาการไงดิสมปรุกลูกประเทศสำหรับสำนักการสำหรับสกฤตสนิทฐานเป็นจับกุศลพิเศษเด่นดังไงนี้กลาบุญจีกับสมกวาเคลื่อนแห่งกรุ๊ปพิกีแต่งอ๊อในเรื่องกระไดนี้มีนวอเตอร์เมียนเลิกเล่นแต่ลูกเป็ดอ๊อกสหเมตวิจิตรนมกดำนางดังเหมือนดังรถประเวณีแต่บ้านจุนเหมือนดังหมอกแถกวาดดังอวัตเตอร์เมียนในขนมสำนักการในไงนี้ได้มูลหัดต่อขลุ่นได้ไล่ลูกนุ่นเชี่ยมีนวอเตอร์เมียนในบนตกคมขลุ่นแข่งกราวซาสำนักการนี้ได้โลกสนาสมและบังสัตมีนวอเตอร์เมียนในขนมบนตกสำนักการในไงนี้ดิคัดแลบ้องสัตว์ดอกบัวลูกนุ่นเชี้ยบานปกติดาวกลามจีรุ่นหายสมากรลูกเทียนโอ้คนกัญญาเชี้ยสีห้องเชี้ยตะบงนี่อ่องยิ่งเรียบสมรัยเลยสมราสมดอกบัวจุดจอดจอดดูนเชี้ยสีเหมือนสันอ่องยิ่งเรียบบานตัวลิขัดสมแลบ้องสัตว์จะรวมสัมนาการได้ตัวขนมปุ๊บสัมนาการนี่ดอกบัวจุดจอดจอดดูนเชี้ยจอดทั้งไงจีดอกพรำใครมีตัวนายชนะมีพอตะปุ่มเปิ้ลได้บานเป็นเชี้ยท้าได้ก่อนเมื่อปัญหาสกปรกเพียบชื่อกับบาชื่อจุดมันไอพิจารณารอมบันยูนั่งดำไปมีหลักเพียบโจรวมสามราการในสายขังมกอเมริกาเสด็จเพียบคนทำแล้วบังสัดโจรวมนั่งมีบทเรียนได้ตัวขนมบทุกสามราการในสายที่ดับพรำใครมีตัวนายชนะปีพรดับเปิลบานเคยกำหนดให้เป็นนักสกปรกเพียบเป็นจอบเจ้าหนุนขี้ได้ช่วยล้างได้กรูเปิดไปจำก้าปีนัดเพียบบาทายตอมสกปรกเพียบเป็นจอบเจ้าเนื้ออวตกอเจ้าทั้งไอที่ดับพรำใครมีตัวนายชนะปีพรดับเปิลบานกอดทำกอดปีจะทานเพียบสกปรกเพียบรับลุกหนุนขี้ในทั้งไอนี้ทำเป็นนักการะเปิลมกชื่อจังเกเชียร์ประจำนักมานประดานอันดุสัตถ์ท้าสมัยอ่อนหยิบได้อันญาติไอ้ลูกนุ่นเชียร์โจรวมตามด้านกิจกรรมการสามนาการที่มันตุ้มงวยทัดกรอมซาสามนาการนี่ไอ้เรื่องมูลฐานนี่นั่งโยงตามบรรยากาศในวิทยาไปทัดมวยพรำในวิทยาไทยขนงอบตกอ่อนหยิบได้อันญาติเอาจุดจบจอดนุ่นเชียร์โจรวมตามด้านกิจกรรมการสามนาการปีจมง่ายที่มันตุ้มคมโคลนมวยทัดกรอมซาสามนาการนี่ตามระยะอุปกรณ์สตูสำหรับยาเปลือกสามนาการเป็นมวยทั้งไงนี่ก็ไปบอกกันแล้วในส่วนตัวจบตะปอนส่วนตัวสำหรับจุดจบจอดมุ่งชี้อาจจะรวมตามด้านกิจกรรมนาคาสัมนาคาพี่จุ่มง่ายในคำลองเพ้นในกิจกรรมนาคาสัมนาคาสำหรับในนี้ปัจจุบันตอนนี้เอาแบบดอลเบกาจุนตือสัพเพญาเรืองอันตรชิดดำไปบรรทออุปกาหมองทบุตรในสัมปทานบัดบรรจบกิจวิชาดิ้งดอลระบักลุนสวัสดีครับคุณลูกประธานสวัสดีครับสวัสดีลูกลูกสไลจ์กรัมสวัสดีครับพี่กีตังอ๊อฟในปีเดียงชุบสมรักกาปีมาสมัยขยมบานในเยอมปีอุกราตกรรมในการดักนองบันทีคมแข็งให้ดังการดอกโฮดในสไลพีบรบบมันนึกรบบอลเนี่ยในบันทีสันติศกนู้นโดยมันเมียนดำเนินการในเตวิทีไว้ตัวที่สอง I want to turn to a subject that comes up over and over. 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 จำลองสารพิษได้ตัวตัวบ้านได้การเพื่อตระนกรรมคือการฉลองดับมันนึกตัวเองตัวมาให้เวียจิมูลทานสำหรับการจับขลุ่นบันทายมติดนู้นในโอคันไซน์ยังมันสำหรับเลยชาวมันไซได้เจียประเทียนบันทีสำสกให้นังอนุประเทศบอกว่าคือชนกลุ่มทองได้ประกอบตั้งปีบ้านมาประดาษเขยกรรมท่าสำหรับสารเพียบเธอบางพญาปีพนมปิงเตอร์เลขากองโปรปมใบโดยมวยซอเสรือนหายเรือนนู้นให้ชั่วให้แต่เฮียนกองโปรดมินชั่วในขนมจำลองสารเพียบในเธอบางฉับคลุ้นให้เธอเก็บบรรจุแต่กุกกองโปรในอันไซยังเคยยังติดกันทางระบบสังเกตการในขนมไอ้ตาจำลองสารเพียบระบบมันตีสมุทรพิมพ์ทองได้ 
ក៏ពីនិតលើចំណោយសារភាពហើយនិងចាប់ឈ្មោះដែលពាក់ព័ន្ធពីthose targets included those going against the revolutionary line and those newly and previously implicated by the enemy. We saw the same uh, evidence at Phnom Krao, Sector 105. A cadre from there, a high-ranking cadre who was interviewed by OCIJ and passed away before its trial, uh, saw confessions um, that had been sent uh, to the Sector 105 military chief. And in this uh, surviving telegram from Sector Secretary Sao Sarun uh, to the leaders in Phnom Penh, uh, which concerned uh, the chairman of a repair factory, uh, Comrade Sot, uh, who had committed a moral act with a woman uh, resulting in the arrest of both persons. Uh, Saroon noted that Comrade Sot had been previously implicated in the responses of the contemptible traitor Chun. And he asked for instructions from the center on what to do. With him. And you should note uh, in this telegram uh, there is a handwritten note in the upper left margin uh, indicating that this document was specifically forwarded to Chia. Uh, in his testimony uh, in this court, Your Honors, uh, Sao Sarun admitted sending this telegram and admitted he had received from the center the names of Sector 105 cadres who had been implicated in the S-21 confession of Chun. Chun had been the head of the Sector Commerce Office. He claimed uh, that the instruction he got back from Phnom Penh was to release Karmat Sat. But we saw in this trial that that was not true. You heard from two uh, witnesses from that sector, Chan Tok and Bon Mon Choi, who both knew Comrade Sot. He was a well-known uh, leader in that sector in charge of the workforces and the brother of the sector military chief. And they both testified that, contrary to what you heard from Sao Sarun, Sao Sarun disappeared from Mondalkiri and was never seen again. Uh, I want to mention uh, also uh, uh, another event we heard uh, during the Phnom Krao segment. Uh, you may remember uh, Phan Long Choi testified uh, about a group of men who fled uh, one of the commerce offices for Vietnam. Their wives, however, did not flee with them. They stayed behind. And the reward for that, as we saw, was a trip to S-21. In regards to S-21, Your Honors, there are, of course, uh, many, many documents. Uh, let me show you one uh, where we say, see the same use of confessions as the basis for arrests. Uh, this is a May 1977 letter uh, from Division 310 uh, to Doug that plainly states, 
uh, seven people were sent to S-21 because their names and activities were mentioned in confession records. And that document, Your Honors, uh, E-3, the arbitrary uh, and extrajudicial nature of arrests uh, is also seen uh, in a letter I'd like to read to you uh, that was sent by uh, a member of the committee of the Kampansam court to Doi uh, on the 1st of June uh, 1977. Uh, regarding a cadre from the North Zone who was being sent uh, to S-21. Uh, this is document E-3-1155. Uh, and, and it is revealing, uh, very revealing, uh, about the arbitrariness of this regime. The letter states to Mrs. Miss and beloved comrade Doik. Today, I transferred a person called Vorm to you. The contemptible person is from the North Zone office with contemptible Tuch. His wife is the same. He is a friend of contemptible Ni in the commerce section. He was transferred because of his activities as mentioned below. When he drove, he braked until the tires dragged 10 to 20 meters. Once, he took a small excavator used for lifting goods to tow a big truck. It could not tow the truck. So he accelerated the engine until the engine became very hot. And his last act, he drove the excavator down the mountain and did not use the brake. He dropped a shovel to drag on the road instead of using the brake. So the suspension is broken because the shovel hit and dragged along the road. When he removed it for repair, the suspension oil gushed out. With revolutionary fraternal respect, respect signed by Krim. Your, your Honours, uh, what we see here uh, in the Khmer Rouge era, being a lousy driver, was enough of a reason for the party to send you to S-21. This is why courts and judicial process is necessary before we deprive people of their liberty. And while the content of this letter is almost humorous, uh, the end of the story is not. This hapless driver, a platoon chief, Srang, Srang alias Vorn, was sent to S-21 on the 1st of June, 1977, and less than three weeks later uh, was sent out for execution. He is number 4315 for your reference on the OCIJ S-21 list. And his execution uh, Record E3-2285. Uh, things were not any better at Krang Tachan. In one of the surviving lists uh, from that prison uh, that identifies 29 prisoners, uh, this is part of E3-4083. There are 29 prisoners. Uh, the first 20 are mostly former Lon soldiers who are described as being arrested because they were part of a network that planned to escape to Vietnam or Thailand. The 
next seven prisoners on the list had the misfortune of breaking either spoons or hose in their cooperatives. Number 28 complained that no one should eat thin porridge. And number 29 was a 73-year-old former village chief who took food to eat. Now, uh, as you'll see in this slide um, that was filed uh, in the annexes to our trial brief, uh, figure 1.5, uh, approximately half of the documented Krang Tachan prison population were former soldiers, officials, or police from the Khmer Republic regime. Uh, this is based on uh, our review of Krang Tachan records, and it's the same conclusion that both Meng Chui and Henri Lucard arrived at when they reviewed surviving uh, records. Your honors heard a testimony from Riel San uh, on the instructions given by the Trampok District Committee to identify and purge former law no who held ranking positions. And the second chart, figure 1.6 in our annexes, shows that almost three quarters of the former law no soldiers imprisoned at Krang Tachan held the rank of warrant officer as or higher. Now, on this issue of the purge of former law no uh, regime soldiers or officials, the, the defense offered a contrary a witness on this issue, Mr. Sal Van. Remember, however, he is someone who left Trump Kok early in the regime. His story is also rather undermined by the fact his own brother was a former Law Nol soldier who was arrested and imprisoned for much of the regime. But in any dispute, Your Honors, any dispute among the witness testimony as to what the policy was in Tramcock is resolved by the surviving records from communes and the district that clearly document an instruction and policy that to purge former law and all officers. I presented those documents to your honors before, uh, so today I will just quickly remind you of two of them. This is an April 1977 report from Ching Thorn Commune that refers to the successive instructions from Ankar to purge enemy officers. It goes on to identify a number of such persons. And the second document is a May 1977 report from Popol Commune, which states that 106 households, a total of 393 people in that commune, of former, long, former military personnel, had already been smashed. And the commune was still screening families to see if they could find more. Your Honors, uh, arresting and imprisoning individuals because they or a relative uh, held a position in or supported the former regime is not due process, it is persecution, plain and simple. Also in regards uh, to Krang Tachan, uh, the very first witness uh, who testified in this trial over two years ago uh, was Mia Soka. Uh, almost his entire family was arrested and imprisoned at Krang Tachan for years because his father and his brother-in-law dared to try to vote out the local village chief. His testimony is corroborated by multiple uh, records from the prison confirming those arrests, such as this uh, May 1978 
list of prisoners detained for months or years, signed by Krang Tachan, prison chief on that includes Miyasoka's mother and sister and references the execution of his father and brother-in-law. And incidentally, number four uh, on the same, very same list is Vorn Sarun, the female medic uh, who testified at the end of the Krang Tuchan segment about her detention uh, and the de detention of her young child at Prank to Chan. And if we go back and look at the same list, uh, the note in the right column for her uh, and her colleague, Uch Han, states the two women were implicated by Hong, a worker in Hospital 22. Your Honours, just because a co-worker will be broken by torture or fear named her in a confession, Vorn Sarun and her young child spent one and a half years in Prang And let me now address the inhumane conditions that she and the others detained at the security offices had to endure. Uh, on this subject, uh, I will discuss uh, the four prisons together. Uh, as the evidence you have heard um, uh, shows a clear and consistent picture of what life was like for those branded as enemies and sent to the security offices. There are five facts or truths about the inhumane conditions suffered by the detainees that are common to all of these security offices. Number one, prisoners were shackled in their cells. Number two, the prisoners had to relieve themselves while shackled in their cells. Number three, hygiene was non-existent. Number four, prisoners did not receive sufficient food. And number five, the prisoners often became ill, did not receive proper medical, medical care, and many died. Let me briefly address the evidence approving each of these facts. With respect to the use of shackles, you have heard how prisoners were shackled by the ankle in their cells day and night, other than a few uh, who were treated as light prisoners and given work assignments in the prison grounds. At the big prisons, the shackles were attached to long metal bars and the prisoners laid on the ground in rows, as we saw in that painting from a prisoner Van Nat. In this photograph, you see the shackles that were used on prisoners left behind at S21 and also at Krang Tachan. And in our next photograph, we go to slide the next slide. Uh, this is a photograph uh, identified by Doig. You see former North Zone Secretary Khoi Tun uh, shackled in the cell in which he was interrogated at the special prison. The Okan Sang prison chief admitted the use of steel and wooden shackles and that serious defense prisoners remained shackled at all times, including when they slept at night. And in regards to Phnom Krao, uh, Net Savat described uh, in this courtroom uh, how one day he was taken to the second floor of the K-17 office and saw a Division 920 soldiers detained by the ankles in wooden shackles. Krang Tachan survivor Vorn Sarun described for you the effects of being permanently shackled like this. 
I had no strength to walk, and I was also suffering from numbness in my ankles because I was shackled. While I was walking to the interrogation room, I did not even feel my legs. A second, your honors, the prisoners at each of these security offices had to urinate and defecate while shackled in their cells into coconut shells, bamboo tubes, ammunition cases, or other such containers that were passed from prisoner to prisoner. As you heard from Chum May, they had to eat and sleep in this very same place where they relieved themselves. Fact number three, because of the lack of hygiene, the prisoners were often covered with lice and their cells were infested by bugs and rats. As was described by Van Nat in his book, Cambodian Prison Portrait, I quote, My body began to deteriorate. My ribs were poking out and my body was like an old man of 70. My hair was overgrown like bamboo roots and had become a nest for lice. Had scabies all over my body. My mind and spirit had flown away. I only knew one thing clearly: hunger. And quote. Civil party Soi Sen, who was imprisoned at Krang Tachan for four years, described the same conditions at that prison. Quote, we couldn't stay still because there were too many bed bugs and body lice that were biting us. I probably killed millions of bugs by just crushing the ground with the palm of my hand. It bit us so much our skin became numb. A former member of the Krang Tachan Committee, Deutsch, known as Big Deutsch, Deutsch in described to OCIJ uh, the sight uh, that he saw when he visited Krang Tachan. Quote, when I entered, when the door was open, I smelled the odor and saw all the people. I had them close the door. I did not want to look anymore. Foreign Saroon testified to you that when she first entered her detention building, she could smell death. Fourth, the prisoners at these security offices were fed almost nothing. They were hungry all the time and became weak and emaciated. The son, Vut, uh, who was detained uh, at a prison in the Phnom Krau area, testified he did not receive any food the first day he was detained and thereafter received daily portions of rice that, in his words, were the size of his wrist. Miyasoka described how his mother was not fed enough to produce breast milk and that two of his younger siblings died a few months after they were detained at Krang Tachan. And in this courtroom in June 2009, Van Nat testified, I quote, the conditions were so inhumane and the food so little. There was a big pot of gruel to be distributed among 50 or 60 of us. So we only had three spoons of gruel for each meal. And the spoon was like a coffee spoon, so little. I lost my dignity 
because the condition of the prisoners and the guards were so distant. It's like humans compared to animals. Even with animals, they would give enough food. I did not think of anything, any other thing than being thirsty and hungry. I was so hungry, I had never experienced that hunger before. And I thought that even eating a human flesh would be a good meal. Fifth, uh, your honors, uh, as a result of the deplorable